when we take a look at our grade four coding expectation, we see once again that we're using very similar wording to what we saw in grades one, two, and three with one change. So our first expectation reads as solve problems and create computational representations of mathematical situations by writing and executing code, including code that involves sequential, concurrent, repeating, and nested events. And we'll notice again, we're including the grade one expectation of sequential, the grade two expectation of concurrent, the grade three expectation of repeating, and now we're introducing nested events. And so we need to understand what is a nested event. Well, a nested event is essentially what we think of when we think of a nest. It's something that's contained within it. We also tend to talk in terms of loops. And a loop would be used to control a structure that allows for a sequence of instructions to be repeated. And again, we can see we're already building in the sequential part. We're already building in the repeating part. It also states that loops make the code more readable and reduce the number of instructions that need to be written. And so if we think about, especially our some of our student ambassadors and what they did early on, where they kept writing the same instructions over and over and over, we can contain that within a repeated or nested event where it only has to be written once then. That's really important because it certainly helps from a debugging standpoint because there's that much less code to have to work through and determine where if any mistakes might be made. And so that's why we really want to encourage using those nested events as much as we can. If we also take a look then, we'll notice in terms of our notes, we get to continue using our combination of pseudocode, block-based coding, text-based programming. We're gonna use agents like the pixelated image once again, acting out the code or a physical device. And then our second expectation remains the same, where we want to read and alter existing code and describe how changes to that code affect the outcome. And so we're gonna take a look at some examples again. So to help you with predicting, if we were to change this or that, how would that change the outcome? And so I wanna show you some examples of what nested events can look like, even from a geometrical standpoint. If we take a look at some of the shapes, some of the equilateral shapes that I've already pulled out of Smart Notebook, You'll notice that I've got my single equilateral triangle, but if I take that second equilateral triangle and put it beside, I've actually created a rhombus, I've created a diamond, I've created a parallelogram, and they could all be considered nested events within the equilateral triangle. If you jump down here, you'll notice that I've got my three equilateral triangles put beside each other, and I've created my trapezoid. And then finally, I took six of them and created my hexagon. And so all of these geometrical shapes could actually be considered nested events as well from a pixelated image standpoint. The second example, though, that I want to share with you of how we use nested events and how we really have been using them for years is I'm going to turn back to our math up number lines once again. We have seen the diversity and just everything that can be done from, uh, from a number line standpoint within our math up program, and coding is no different. And if you take a look at the number line that I've generated here, you can see that obviously I've created a number line that goes up by five. But think about this. We have contained within this number one sequential coding because we are going in sequence. We are adding up by five at each interval. We have also included repeating events because we're also skip counting by five and we're repeating that aspect. But then if we were to ask, how would you describe this as a multiplication concept? That's the nested event, because we could describe this as five times four. And so we've actually simplified our entire algorithm 
by writing it as a multiplication problem rather than uh, calling it 5 plus 5 equals 10 plus 5 equals 15 plus 5 equals 20. And so that gives you a couple examples of what we mean by nested events and how we've been using them. Let's turn to our student ambassadors now and look at how they've created nested events using Scratch and Lynx coding. Okay, so um, this is my project. I will name it Moving Dude. I haven't named it yet. Um, so what he does is he spins around. Um, I go to events, one fly flip, then control, uh, in for, I check a forever block, and I went here, I took the move to 260, oh, nice, uh, that size 260, 260 jack, turn 15 degrees, uh, there's a, these things are lost. Oh, and I also, uh, in sound, I took the play sound pop in the, in the river block. And so, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, Michael here. Today is another project that Mr. Moore told me to do. do. It's called Stuff on Scratch because I obviously didn't know what to call it. So here's how it works. The code is quite simple, actually. All I did was when green flag clicked, repeat until touching knife, and then I don't know why I did this, but I added two blocks. There's really no need for that. And as you just saw, if you were looking, one bend right here, this sprite touched the knife, then said oof. And you can see that code right here. Anyways, thanks for listening. And Hello, today we are going to be learning about nested events, which are events that which is a command and a series of code that will repeat itself again and again, and it won't stop until you ask it to. So here what I have is a little dance party. Okay, so I'm, I'll click on these characters and they will dance. Wow. As you can see, they're moving around and doing their little dances. I'll let it run for a little bit more just to show you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how this works. Now, to make this character jump, I, I use the forever command, which we're going to use on all of these three characters. And the code is set heading zero, glide 50, and set the speed to one, set heading 180, and then glide 50, speed one. And now... This character moves side to side, and her code is set heading 90, set shape 70, set size 35, glide 50, set speed to 1, set heading 270, set shape 71, set size 35, and glide 50, set speed to 1. And it's important. And I put the set size because if I if I didn't the this character would grow would grow and 
it wouldn't fit in and we didn't we don't want this and now we're gonna make Terry here run so the code is very similar t to her her code but there's no glide so it's set shape 51 set size 50 weight 2 set size 52 set or set shape 52 set size 50 weight 2 set shape 50 set size 50 weight 2 and you can customize these things a bit and really that's all bye so as you can see this is the same project that i did yesterday um, now I'm going to add another procedure, uh, another step to the procedure, which is going to be a set shape command. So I am going to pick out uh, an image, which is going to be a present. And I'm going to save the image. in my uh, box right here. here it is. Now in my procedures, I'm going to add the set shape. Set shape. And the number which is there, which is one. So now, if I tap my turtle one more time, it turns into a gift box and it still runs. And so our student ambassadors in this one were very focused on ensuring that you saw some examples of what happens when we change the coding and so you saw blocks being removed, you saw other aspects being added, and the impact that that had on the program. And so we would encourage you, if you can replicate the programming that they've put in place, play with it a little bit and see what happens when you make those changes. And we would love to hear from you as to what you end up creating by commenting on this video. Thank you very much.